What's up, everybody? I'm Scott. I'm Jason. And you are listening to Liquid Carnage. What's up, buddy? Oh, man. Living the dream, but I don't know, my friend. I, I, I've been a little, little uh, overwhelmed lately with work and fun stuff at work and news and everything's just going crazy, man. Everything's just going crazy. It's a very weird time to be an American right it, now. It's a very weird time to be in America. And I feel like there are, you know, there's such a separation now between people like me who are old and, you know, remember different times and the young people mm-hmm. who this is like they're normal now. So they, they don't see that yeah. there, there, there could be other ways of doing these things. And, you know, uh, yeah, exactly. The conflict resolution uh, is very different today as it was when you were growing up versus even when I was growing yeah. up, you know? Yeah. Yeah, like oh, like for example, we just passed Halloween, right? Uh, now yeah. I don't know about you, but I remember the days when the kids were out. It was just a mad zoo in neighborhoods. We had five mm-hmm. kids come to our door. Five. That's, That's it? it. Five kids. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what though, and I would expect in your neighborhood to be a lot more because you live in a nice, straight neighborhood in, in Scottsdale. Uh, I would I would peg that area as prime candy because uh, rich people equals the big good size chocolate bar. Well, and, and and that's the thing though we moved so we moved out of like we're on the the western cusp of Scottsdale, but we're actually considered North Phoenix, right? Well, but mm-hmm. North Phoenix is still a, like an established neighborhood, and so we're thinking, oh, we're going to get a bunch of kids, going to be great. We had six kids. Five of them came in one group, and then one little boy came with his mom who lives across the street. Wow. Now, I mean, that that's a petty thing to be complaining about. But now, don't get me wrong. I understand. The kids can go to a church parking lot and get 80,000 pounds of candy and walk three car, you know, car lengths and get, you know, 90,000 pounds of candy. I get it. But it's just another. Well, don't you think? Go ahead. No, I was just going to say it's just another example of the kids nowadays are going to miss out on all the cool things that we did as kids. Yeah, I get that. You know, I understand the safety aspect of the trunk or treats. The, the church is giving out the candy, man. That's that's fine. I I personally didn't. I haven't handed out candy for the last. This is the third Halloween in a row. Well, the previous two I've been traveling, and, and this year the Cardinals were playing, so I was, I was at the bar. That's true. So, okay. Okay. I, I, I live on a cul-de-sac. Um, the first year I lived here, we, we were pretty. I was pretty excited to finally get trick-or-treaters because my old house, I never got any. I think, to like you, we got like six. So anymore, it's not worth it to me. I'll just turn off the lights and go watch TV in the bedroom if I'm home. In this case, I went to the bar because the Cardinals were playing. I would much rather the kids go to those trunk-or-treats or that. I miss the old days of when we used to – when. We were kids. We could go trick or treating like that, but you know, in a, the world we live in today, it, it's probably better as a whole that they don't go knocking door to door because there's a lot more scary people out there now, or at least we're a lot more aware of the scary people now. Now, one thing, one idea that, that that I was listening to on the radio and they suggested was instead of having it on October 31st, they'd rather have it on the last uh, Saturday of October so that people can yeah, party. You know, have some drinks, maybe, you know, throw some candy out the you know, door, you maybe streak naked, you know, have a little bit of real. <sighs> Here's the problem with that. And, and this is strictly my opinion. I think when you start, I, I think anymore, it's, it's gone to the point where like the Saturday before Halloween is like the major Halloween parties at bars and when people tend to throw them in their houses and Halloween itself should be for the kids. If you have kids. Take them trick or treating. Do those things. Do the fun things. If you try to make it all on one night, you're going to muddy the waters and make it a whole lot worse than it than it than it is. You know? Yeah. And like next year, Halloween's on a Saturday. Okay. So we've mapped this out. Um, we have some friends that that bought. Uh, th- our friends Dean and Danielle bought an old. We'll call it a mansion in downtown Kingman because it's a fucking huge house. Right. That they're, they're going to start renovating, and their basement is prime for a Halloween party. Oh, nice. And. And and we've kicked around that idea, but it's almost like if there's plenty of bars that have them, annual parties you go to, you have to do that the week before because once actual Halloween rolls around, that's that should be about the kids. And you don't want to be out drinking in crowds and having a good time. Like we'll take downtown Kingman, for example, where they do a major truck or treat. 
they do that major trunk or treat in the middle of all the bars that have giant parties. So you're just asking for a giant's cluster waiting to happen. You know? Okay. Two very different forms of celebrating. Okay. Well, I guess I think I'm I'm more focused on the fact that I must be getting old because I, I'm finding it irritating that we had no <laughs> kids. And so you never know whether oh. to buy too much or too little candy. And now I know we bought way too much candy. Well, I'll give you that. That's annoying. I'll tell you what I find annoying about Halloween. So last week, uh, there's nothing on TV. And I knew AMC was going to play the Halloween movies like they always do. And it was like, I think it was last Tuesday. I went to go turn on Halloween because I just started thinking it was the 1978 John Carpenter original. And it wasn't. It was the Rob Zombie remake. Oh, no. And I was pissed. Yeah. Because that one's more gory. It's not, it's not as, as suspenseful like, like, this, like the classic style. Yeah. So I was annoyed that they had the re- they had the remake on, not the first remake, and, and not the original. And then I, I so I turned on the channel guide, and Poltergeist was on, and I love Poltergeist. Like I'll watch that. And then it was the fucking remake to that pol- to the to the Poltergeist movie, the one that came out two or three years no, ago. No, come on, really? Yeah, I was like, come on, man. It's 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 Halloween. Like show the originals. Yeah, yeah. That that's why. Like I get I get upset when they say, well, we're gonna make a a remake of uh, Gone with the Wind. Why? Just watch Gone with the Wind. Like, why do you have to make a remake yeah. of a movie again? Like, like Halloween. Doesn't that stand on its own? Like, why, why do you need to make a remake of Halloween when kids can just watch Halloween? I get it. Yeah. When they redid Point Break, one of the best cop movies of all time. They made the new one trash. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's very frustrating because I know they want to rehash some timeless, some timeless classics, but it doesn't mean you have to put a new crappier twist on it. Well, you know? and, and especially when, when I, when I like, for example, I watched the movie Papillon. Now, Papillon <laughs> was a remake of an original movie made back in the '60s, but this movie and that movie were basically the same premise. Okay. Mm-hmm. Why do you need to remake it? Why don't you just watch the original Papillon? Like, why, why do you remake it? From the original. The original's fine. Watch do, it. Do, do you think it's because it, it's because they want to capture a new audience with stars that people re- that recognize today? Yeah, because I think the, the remake was made with uh, Remy Malik before he was in... Oh, and, and Charlie Hanum. Uh, the, yeah. Yeah, the guy from the, the motorcycle Sons, club. Sons, Sons of Anarchy. Anarchy. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, I guess I could get that, but they, for example, they did a remake of Ben Hur. Now, the actors mm-hmm. that they used in Ben Hur, I didn't know those people. I, I mean, they, yeah. they weren't any like big time young actors. Well, why don't you just watch Charlton Heston and an Academy Award winning film? Why do you got to watch two guys that you don't even you know know? And then that's the other thing they re- they they change the story. They change the end of the story. So it's like, yeah. See, I'm getting old, buddy. I'm getting old. I, 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 I totally get that pet peeve, though, too. It's like, I'm not a big horror film buff, but why don't you just watch the original Halloween and be done with it? Why do you got to make a remake of the you know the movie to add just more gore to it? And, and that's where I was at with it, too. It's, you know, I really, I, I really I don't watch a lot of horror either, but I appreciate the original Halloween. I appreciate the suspense, the way things are done. It is cheesy by today's standards. But it's also fun to to watch, you know. I still watch the old Friday the Thirteenth because they're just they're entertainment to me. They're more comedies by today's standards. Oh yeah, by today's. How about this? I can watch Friday the Thirteenth, and mm-hmm. I don't like horror movies at all. And I can watch Friday the Thirteenth because I don't get scared with those. Oh no! You oh you remember that one time JP had we we had a Friday the Thirteenth night outside uh, by his pool. Yeah. We had the campfire going, and it was it was almost comedic because we were making fun of it the whole time. Yeah, it was so cheesy and laid out. Yeah, and they tried to remake that one ten years ago or, or reboot it, I should say, and they actually had a pretty scary take on it. That would have done really well had they not got into a, a, a legal argument over who actually owned the rights to this to the franchise. Oh, interesting. Okay, but but that that's the hard part about something like a horror movie remake. You could you can actually make it better in some degree because you don't have to go total gore. You could change the psychology of the whole film. But man, trying to make sequels off that is, it gets frustrating because, you know, at some point you just have to say no, enough's enough. Think of something new. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm finding that even with songs now, like I was listening to the radio 
and um, I can't now I can't remember the name of the band, but some band did a remake of the song Africa. Oh yeah, Weezer. Weezer, thank you. They did a remake of the song Africa, and yet it sounded exactly like the song Africa. So why don't you I just them, listen yeah. to the song? Like, why are yeah. you remaking a song to make it sound exactly mm. like the song? Re-release it, you know. Re- yeah, yeah, re-release it. it. it and, and that's the issue I had. Like, we went and saw Terminator over the weekend. And if you haven't seen the new Terminator movie yet, well, I'm just going to give you a spoiler alert now. Um, don't waste your time. Oh, that if, bad. If you, okay, okay. If, if you saw the first two, which I, I, I assume this is a direct continuation of the first two and ignores everything after that. Oh, okay. It, yeah, because that, that storyline premise did kind of bounce around a little bit. Yeah, and, and I'll, I'll go ahead and give some spoilers to this. But basically, the premise is... Um, after uh, Sarah Connor, John Connor, and the Terminator, the T-900 uh, or whatever the hell he was, Schwarzenegger, thwarted Judgment Day in T-2, um, life went on. We went past 19, August 29th, 1997, when Judgment Day was supposed to happen, and nothing happened. And in 1998, when Sarah Connor was with her son, John. Now, mind you, this is the same movie that touted the return of Linda Hamilton, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and Edward Furlong. Oh, Edward Furlong's in it? Uh, let me get... They touted oh, that he was. Okay, sorry, um, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. The, the I would say, 15-year-old image of John of Edward Furlong was... Because if you look up a picture of Edward Furlong today, uh, he, time has not been kind to him. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> um, Continue. But basically, in 1998... Uh, Linda Hamilton, Sarah and John Connor are on the run still and a Terminator has caught up to them <clears throat> in Guatemala and kills John Connor. And the Uh-oh. premise is that they sent multiple Terminators to, to carry out the mission until the mission was completed. So uh, Sarah Connor proceeds to go nuts and spends the rest of her l- days tracking down Terminators through mysterious texts that she would get at the exact time and location of where they would, I guess, come through the time warp. Okay. And it would always say for John. And she never knew where it was from. Well, this new premise was, you know, it takes place, it starts off in Mexico City. Um, clearly, Terminator comes from the past, or comes from the future. This one's a hybrid of, it's liquid metal, and it can detach itself from its skeleton, its metal skeleton that can act on its own. So it's basically a twofer. Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah right. you've already lost me at hello, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you, you go gambling for this movie all day <laughs> yeah, long. Yeah, this is gambled all day long. Yeah. In fact, I was even hesitant on seeing this movie up right up until like the credits start. Like I could like if I had to eat twelve bucks to say I pay twelve bucks for a diet coke, I'd be okay with it. Um, <laughs> like uh, easy come, easy go. So, okay. So, <laughs> Terminator comes down to Mexico City. Um, same premise, the uh, new girl who's the salvation of the future. It's no longer Skynet. Uh, because the future's been changed, it's now a, a company called Legion. And th- this, w- this girl is being protected by a human uh, cyborg, basically, an enhanced human from the future who has been given uh, super heat, super strength, super speed, super fighting powers through like an exosuit, basically. And she tries to protect them. Enter Sarah Connor, who uh, gives her whole shtick about why, what she's doing there. She was sent a mysterious text, and they track the coordinates. And this woman has the coordinates, those same coordinates mysteriously tattooed on her to go if something, everything felt, you know, went to shit. Are you with me so far? You lost me at Sarah Connor. Okay, so no, Sarah Connor is tra- <laughs> She's getting texts, and she's tracking down Terminators and killing them through these mysterious. Okay. Yeah. And they use GPS to figure out where these texts are coming from. Yeah. So it turns out those, those coordinates are tattooed on the human that's been sent back to protect uh, the new version, the new savior of, of, the, of humanity. So they go to Texas only to find uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, who <clears throat> is the Terminator that admits to killing John Connor back in 1998. Now, this is where it gets interesting. This is where they try to put a human twist on it, but just totally lost it. Okay. Um, after his mission was carried out, he had no other reason to keep on exterminating people. So he just started observing humanity 
and met a woman and a small and her son in an abusive relationship and basically fell in love. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it gets better. It okay. gets better. Wow. So now he and this woman and his son are living in rural Texas where he is named Carl and owns his own drapery company. <laughs> <laughs> okay and, and now once they meet Carl the typical plot line uh, ensues they are tracked by the bad Terminator and they have to do whatever it takes to stop them yada 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 new judgment day is uh, not prevented but they know how to start the resistance now so it, if they wanted to continue on with the series it ends with um, Sarah Connor Linda Hamilton beginning to train uh, the new savior for the world that's coming because they know they can't stop it. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Um, this, yeah, is, this is like, yeah, this is like a reboot, um, like a sequ- like direct sequel that just, I hope they stop, man. Cause you can only do so much with bad, you know, bad robots from the future coming back in time to kill somebody, you know? Well, yeah. The novelty of the, I mean, what makes the original Terminator, so interesting is that one the premise was completely new yeah. two for that time the special effects were for insane. that time amazing right yeah i mean it was insane and three there was a legitimate storyline that was a struggle that you could believe the resolution right you yeah. can believe the resolution of the of the story because they made it where that while the Terminator was badass, he was he was susceptible to um, certain things that could kill him. Yeah, that's what made it special. So when these they, when they try to add all this these new plots, it, it takes away from what made that movie special. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, now I mean, every, every uh, sequel uh, has a Terminator that's now it's more and more unstoppable and more and more invincible, and they always seem to find the one little flaw that can get it killed. Right. Right. Oh, and, 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 you know, I mean, obviously there's money to be made and I get that, but we just had an episode, what, not four weeks ago, you know, Rambo enough is enough Rambo Oh, this yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. is like overflow into that where it comes with, you know, before it was how many sequels do you have? And now we're getting into, you know, this isn't really, this isn't even uh, the re- sequels and the remakes are causing us just, just gray hair. Oh yeah. Yeah, I, it's, yeah, it's 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 just because you can doesn't mean you should world now, you know. You don't well, have to keep making these movies, and I get that they think well, kids will love this whole premise. If kids are going to love the premise, go back and watch the original. Yeah, I, go back, I, go I back and check argue, it out. I would argue to anyone like like for example, uh, Noreen has never seen Gone with the Wind. Okay, mm-hmm. now most people haven't seen Gone with the Wind. No, all right, most people have not seen Gone with the Wind. But to me, making a remake of Gone with the Wind defeats the purpose of watching the original, which won every single Academy Award out there. They said that on a per annum basis that it is still the highest grossing movie of all time. That because if you would have taken the monies that were made at Gone with the Wind and transcended them to today's time, it would have uh-huh. been like $8 billion. Jeez. That's how much money they made. So it comes back to just don't mess with an original. Hey, man, if, if an original's out there, why don't you just ha- like I would love to see them say, hey, you know, instead of making an original or remake of uh, Ben Hur, we're going to re-release the 50th anniversary of Ben Hur and augment it with better colors and yeah. but just re-show it and see what, you know, but maybe the problem is people wouldn't go see it. You know, maybe well, people yeah, wouldn't it, go see it. And maybe maybe that's what they should look at too. Because you, you remember when they redid Psycho, when Gus Van Zant and Vince Vaughn did Psycho? Yes. Um, they took great pride in the fact they reshot everything frame for frame on the same schedule with using the same script that uh, Alfred Hitchcock used. Yeah. And it tanked, man. Bad. It was it tanked bad, and it, it's too bad because I, I, it was it was it was good. But if you saw the first Psycho, then you basically saw this Psycho. But if you're going to do a remake, I think that's what you got to do. I don't think you need to have some kind of new crazy plot twist. 
you know. Okay, Scott, we'll put you out there. Which remake right now, if you had a remake done, would stop you from watching movies ever again? Ooh. So if they had to remake any movie again, and it was if they so decided bad. to remake a movie, they decided to remake a movie, and they, and it was a movie that you loved, and they decided to remake it just to remake it. You'd say, you know what? No, I'm done. Ne- never again. I'm not doing Ooh. it. There's probably quite a few. Yeah. Um, I would have said Point Break, but they already fucked that up. They messed that up. Oh, they they, they screwed up hard on that one. Um, yeah. Top Gun, Tombstone. Oh, man, the list can go. Any of the... Uh, God, yeah. if they remade Tombstone, I would... Yeah, that would be a top five. I'll never watch a movie again. Spaceballs. You know... <laughs> If, if, I think if they touched the young Frankenstein, like anything like that, anything like Mel Brooks yeah. or just like comedic genius and made it like stupid slapstick, like scary movie type, I'd be furious. I, 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 I re- went back out and rewatched Silence of the Lambs. Mm-hmm. If they tried to m- remake Silence of the Lambs, I, I, I would be just like done. I mean, that movie was so good and those actors were so good. That it stands on its own. You don't need to remake it. Yeah. Do not need to remake that movie. What if they remade? Oh, God. It just. <sighs> Give me a second here. It just really irritates the shit out of me. That if they even considered, you're right, Silence of the Lambs, um, Braveheart. Oh, I, yeah. I, I, yeah I, I don't know. I don't know. But yet. Let's be honest, dude. Let's be honest. How many times have we met someone who breaks up with a girl or a guy? The very next girl is exactly like the girl or guy they just broke up with. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So we're gluttons for punishment, right? We, we, we go back to the same thing again and again. So maybe it's they say, hey, look, I know that this story is exactly the same as the story that was done much better. But, hey, people are willing to pay for it. Let's do it. You know, there are there are a few cases. Now, just to play devil's advocate of this conversation, there are a few cases where the remake does work better than the original. And not not better, but it's acceptable, I guess is the way. Okay. It, um, yeah. You don't you can watch it as a remake and you're okay with that they remade the film. Yeah, it will not even not even do it as a film. Like we'll take the Lethal Weapon TV series. That when I think three or four seasons with Fox, it was actually a very fun series. It okay. made you okay. forget about Danny Glover and Mel Gibson, and you can actually see these guys, and they played the part of Riggs and Murtaugh very well. Uh, they they did a very good. It was Damon Wayans played Murtaugh, and uh, Clay and Crawford played Riggs. Okay, up until he was shot and killed in it, but it, it was a fun story. It's like it's, those are the fun movies okay. that that could be made into a fun TV a TV show. Uh, another one example is Jack Ryan. I don't know if you've watched the new Jack Ryan on Amazon Prime with John Krasinski. It was good. Um, season two just came out this last week. Oh, okay. And to me, I, I get upset at this series like that when it's only eight episodes because it's so well done, in my opinion. Okay. And he plays that part perfectly. Now, I'm sure Alec Baldwin, Harrison Ford, and Chris Pine all did their part to play that very well, too. But I, I think in this case, the way they're, the way they're remaking it and, and – approaching these stories now is a much better platform okay okay here's a, okay so here's the question scott could you see john krasinski in the hunt for red october yes no way yes and i can't and i'll, and I'll tell you the only way it works okay wow okay and i will tell you the only way it works in this case is okay. if you took the, the hunt for red october and you didn't try to make it a two-hour movie but if, if you made it into like a mini series, like a, like an eight episode series, that way you, you can have more exposition, you can explain a whole lot more, and you're not just trying to keep up with, you know, a, a Russian sea captain, submarine captain trying to turn trying to turn over his sub and, and find a su- political asylum. But you can dive more into the backstory, more into everything. I I, I think it could it could work out pretty well. Okay. So maybe that's the key. If you're going to do a remake, you got to pick the right actor to, to replace I, I, I think you. It, it's more than just the right actor. It, it, it's got to be the right avenue of storytelling. If, if you said, we're going to redo The Hunt for Red October, um, 
with John Krasinski and find someone to replace Sean Connery. And I don't know who you find to replace Sean Connery in that kind of role. Yeah. I, I would be I, very, I, I would uh, be very man. suspect of a two hour movie like that. But if you said, Hey, we're taking that story and we're making it into like a ten episode, you know, mini series so you can actually like dive deeper into the Clancy book. You know what? I I'd be all right with like, all right, I'll check it out. I think it's a new take on it, and there's more exposition, and they're not trying to do uh, what the original already's done. All right. Well, there we go. Okay. Maybe. I. No. Yeah, that's. I'm just trying to think of alternatives. You know. I, I find it interesting though, because obviously there's a market out there of younger people who don't mind watching a remake of, like I said, Ben Hur, Ben Hur, or Papillon, or some of these old classics, because to them they don't realize that there was a classic, like. Yeah, as I said, those kids don't those kids don't realize that was a movie before most and those stories have been told time and time again. Under the age of thirty do not know who Charlton Heston is. Or do not know who no. Steve McQueen is. You know, so Yeah. But let's be real. You know, the minute the minute this, this next generation tries to remake Star Wars and tries to retell the stories of Luke Skywalker with the teeny bopper stars of whatever the next generation is, it's gonna go over like a lead balloon. Well, no, I mean, I'm sure that Disney will probably hopefully re- rekindle a whole new audience. And then us old fogies will be like, eh, we're not going to go, but the young kids will go. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. I know, I'll, add, I'll add one more to the list before we start wrapping this up. Uh, if they redid Die Hard, uh, the original three Die yeah. Hards, I, I would... I, I would the, probably the original revolt. Die Hard. I totally, I, I would, yeah. Like, I could see them totally trying to screw it up by putting Dwayne Johnson as... Uh, John McClane. Oh, he did. That was it was called Skyscraper. Oh, I never even saw that. That's right. Well, if you if, if you saw Die Hard, you saw Skyscraper. It's no, the basic same then, premise. Yeah, then I didn't see. It. Okay. Yeah, it's it's yeah, very similar, yeah. very similar. Um. So why don't why don't we ask our audience because we haven't done our, our social media plug yet? We're gonna hear hear from our EP. Uh, is there a movie you don't ever want to see remade or that's been remade and you just couldn't stand it? Hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, all at Liquid Carnage. Uh, if you've seen the new Star Trek series and you're a big fan or you're not a big fan, uh, talk to Tom on his Instagram or Twitter at Liquid underscore EP and give him your thoughts because I'd like to see that Twitter exchange happen. You know, that you bring up well, – we can maybe conclude with that because I will say that that – some might argue, well, the Star Trek, Star Trek Next Generation, that's just a remake of – but they're no, those are they're different the versions. Set, different, you know, the stories are in the the genre of Star Trek, but they're totally different. Um, different, yeah, different timelines. I think yeah, they're not the same timelines. characters um, in each of the episodes. I mean, they're, they're, the the characters are different, the stories are different. They're yeah. So I guess there is a distinction there that some might argue that even the, the you know the plot is the is different, but the um, background is the same yeah and you know and that's also one that i, w- I will say they've done a good job with the three uh the star trek trilogy that came out over the last 10 years i, I think was it was very I well to done admit, i, I, I did admit, i did enjoy yeah i, I, I did enjoy those. that that remake was one of my favorite remakes that those the the actors the stories and maybe it's also because once again the characters are the same but the stories are totally different they're not the same story i mean they're they're in and of they're, they're self-contained in their own movie yeah yeah and, and the the whole the, the cons uh twist in, in the second movie and uh, yeah. i just thought it was very well done. okay so you've you've you know you've renewed my faith in humanity buddy i i do what i can that's that's, that's full, circle. full circle I, you know what I started the podcast for, for, as a grumpy old man, and I'm ending the podcast as a happy. Well, all I'm saying is, for every Terminator Dark Fate, there's a Star Trek it, into baby. the darkness. I love it. I love it, man. Why don't you take great, us home? Great, great talk. Appreciate everyone listening. Hey, like I said last week, uh, feel free to share this with your friends, family, people who haven't listened before and want to have a new podcast to listen to. We'd love to add to our family. That was Scott. I am Jason, and as always, if you never know quite what to say. Just have yourself some liquid carnage.